Get mechanical now or be hard stuck in 2024. Look, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this video and tell you you can get SSL with zero mechanics. Nowadays, you can't. The truth is the game has changed a lot in the last two years. And if you don't change with it, you are going to be left behind. So in this video, I'm going to outline exactly what you need to train in order to keep up with the meta at every rank bracket. What I can promise is that if you watch to the end, I guarantee you will walk away with a new way to train that you haven't thought about before. Spook blue, gave it a $50. Jesus. This is going to be the ranked meta in 2024. Also, coaching update from our sponsor. The Grand Champ Bootcamp has 135 seats left of 325. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the Grand Champ Bootcamp is Rocket League's number one live coaching bootcamp that takes platinum through champ ranked players, maybe like you, up to Grand Champ in just 12 weeks time. When you join the GCB, you're introduced to a network of over 3,000 competitive players and you take a benchmark test before you're assigned the private coach for your first 12 weeks of training. So if you're looking for a coach or maybe community that takes your rank and improvement as seriously as you do, DM the GCB Discord account with the keyword start to see if you might qualify for coaching. That's keyword start, first link below to learn more. Okay, so when it comes to mechanics, the question I often get is, Luke, how mechanical do I need to be to rank up? Before I give you any advice, you need to understand this. This is incredibly important. When any creator gives advice, they are speaking to a specific rank. The low ranks are all about the basics and becoming consistent with them rather than trying to learn a bunch of mechanical stuff. So the thing you have to understand is you have to take all of this in context. Let me explain with a story. I don't use Twitter much, but I think about a month ago, people were clowning me for a screenshot of a tier list video I made where I put redirects in the bottom tier. I said redirects were not important to learn to rank up. And a lot of SSLs and pro players came out of the woodwork and said, oh my gosh, of course redirects are essential. How could anybody be saying redirects aren't essential? And I'm going to defend my point. What I was saying is not that redirects aren't important. I was saying redirects are not important for the diamond two who can barely hit open nets. They don't need to focus on redirects. And so I'm not going to derail this video and waste your time with that because nobody's time needs to be wasted with Twitter threads. But here's the point. Whenever you listen to advice online, you need to understand who you're taking it from, what their experience is, and who they're trying to give the advice to. That being said, I'm going to give advice to three different types of players in this video. And if you play ranked in Rocket League, you're guaranteed one of these three types of players. There's no way you're not. The first type of player, beginner. You are a beginner Rocket League player, in my eyes, if you are Diamond 2 or below. And we'll explain why in a second. Intermediate means you're ranked anywhere Diamond 3 to GC1. And finally, advanced, GC2+. plus. Those are the three types of players I'm going to be speaking to in this video. Here's what I found from my experience playing the game and coaching. When you're a beginner in Rocket League, you are like a sponge. Anything and everything makes you better at the game. If you simply pick up the controller and go play Drop Shot, you will rank up. You could even pick up the controller and go queue Snow Day, if you can find a match, just play the game, you will rank up. That's a beginner in my eyes. An intermediate player needs to think a little bit about what they're training to improve. I remember when I hit Diamond 3, Champ 1, Champ 2, I wasn't just getting better from solo queuing ranked 3s, or at least I wasn't getting better that fast. So intermediate is the point where some sort of training will help. And finally, you'll have the highest bracket of players, which is advanced. I'm classifying advanced as GC2+, plus because I think there's a big divide between GC1s and GC2s. The thing about when you get too advanced in Rocket League, at least from what I've noticed, because I've been stuck GC2 for as long as anybody has been stuck GC2, I think. I might actually have personally set the record. Camille, the video guy, put something on screen if I do hold the record. But the thing about being advanced is that when you're advanced in Rocket League, the only way you can continue to improve is by focusing on your weaknesses you need to keep up that grind. It's easy to take a break immediately after reaching your goal of hitting the top rank, but unless you're okay with immediately dropping out of it right after, 
taking a break is a bad idea. Even if you're getting faster, even if you're getting more mechanical, because your improvement looks like this, but the skill ceiling and the average skill of, you know, a, a GC2 is just improving, you will literally just match the skill level. And that's what's happened to me for the past two years. I've been playing the game like 10, 20 hours a week, not really training. And so what happens? I get a little bit better. And then the average GC2 gets a little bit better. And then I think I'm a little bit better and I can get to GC3. And uh, the average GC2 just got better. And so you just stay at the same rank. What would it take for you to get SSL? What's the number one thing holding you back? I just don't play the game enough. I mean, that's not the only reason, of course. There's many reasons, but I'm just not in the grind site, you know? That's not really why I play Rocket League. I don't really care about hitting SSL. This is why it's hard to stay on top at the pro level. You can stay at your same rank, but eventually you're going to get passed by people who are improving faster. Okay, so now that you understand what the three different rank ranges are, I can tell you what I recommend you train to improve faster than the people at your rank. We'll start off with beginner. What is most important for a beginner to train? I could tell you to go work on these specific workshop maps and these specific training packs and all this different stuff. And like, yes, speed flips are good. Yes, redirects are good. Yes, all this stuff is good. But if you're gold, the best way to improve at the game is to just go into free play and hit the ball. I know if we clip this, it's not going to make the most entertaining YouTube YouTube short, but I'm just going to give it to you straight. The coaching program I founded a couple years ago recently told me they won't take you unless you're minimum plat. There's nothing they could tell you that would help you more than just playing the game. You got to learn how to half flip. You got to learn how to wave dash. And honestly, the best resource is just free tutorials. I'm not going to make things more complicated than they need to be. Cue the game. You will improve. On to the intermediate section. This is where things get interesting. If you're diamond to GC1, you're intermediate ranked. And the thing about intermediates is that if you don't actually train something specific, you're going to get passed up by people that do. Okay, so when it comes to improvement for intermediates, I'm going to give you my top workshop maps and then my top training packs that are going to skyrocket your mechanics. Let's start with workshop maps. Number one on the workshop maps list has to be any rings map from the Steam Workshop. You can use Lathomir's ring, Lava rings, ice rings, medieval rings, neon rings. Nothing beats the challenge of a rings map for a diamond or a champ ranked player. The challenge level to the level of skill needed to complete the map matches so perfectly that you're going to improve so fast. Rings map has to be number one for improvement for intermediate ranks. Second on my list is going to be dribble to overhaul or the any dribble challenge workshop map. There are a couple new ones, but the classic and one of the best still to these dates, at least for intermediate rank players, is just going to be dribble challenge too. Dribble to overhaul will finally make it so you can consistently control the ball and consistently flick off the ground. Plus, it's way harder than a training pack could ever be. The difficulty level, once again, matches the skill level. Two bonuses for a shooting map. I'm going to show you aim training by Coco. If I could only use one shooting drill for the rest of my Rocket League career and I had to get rid of the rest, I'd choose the this hands down. And then finally, I'm going to show you one recoveries map that I've only recently started using that is going to improve your mechs and your speed around the field. This one is called a Hornet's Nest by DMC. It's a gauntlet style map, so it's just survive as long as you can. This recovery map will train your recovery so much faster than free play because the dome is so small. You constantly have to switch surfaces, and so you're going to get much more comfortable using the ceiling, using the sidewalls, and using the back walls, especially with a time pressure. So basically, it won't let you slow up. Now, those workshop maps are going to get you 80% of your results. Now, for the super hardcore players, I'm going to give you a couple training packs that are going to train the weak points that those workshop maps won't train. So here are my top eight training packs for intermediate ranked players. First pack, wall to air dribble. This is going to get you confident with the ball, or at least familiar with it in the air, enough to get up to grand champ. Second map I'm going to give you is dribble training. This one I used when I was improving my dribbling. It's by the coach Ver highly recommend not much else to say third map i'm going to suggest to you is double tap playground i personally didn't use this map much to rank up but i went on cash's stream the other day and asked him what his favorite training packs are to this day he says still to this day he uses double tap playground so for that reason i had to give it a shout then onto my number four uncomfortable saves these are the easy shots that you should be able to save but for whatever reason we all 
miss. Number five, why you suck shadow defense. This is a textbook shadow defense pack that I think all diamond and champ players should at least make sure they're good at. Shadow defense must train at least to make sure you're good before you move on. Next one, aerial off wall. The reason I love this pack is because it's not just about air dribbles. I don't know if you've ever had a situation like this in game where the ball is like a little bit too far off the wall for an air dribble, but you should still be able to shoot it. A lot of people will just be inconsistent or miss their touch, but if you can get consistent with hitting the ball off the wall, you're going to be leagues ahead of all diamond enchant players. And the last two packs are called shots you shouldn't miss and shooting consistency. I'll put both of the packs on screen. And I know this doesn't look flashy, but doing these shooting training packs, it's like eating your vegetables. If you just do it for one day, you're not going to see crazy benefits. But if you can get consistent with it and just build the habit of doing it, I'm not saying you're going to love it the first three days you do it. I'm saying do it for a week. If you just stay consistent for seven days of doing shooting training packs. You're going to make it a habit. And once it becomes a habit, I guarantee you will see results in your game. You're going to be shooting faster or consistently. It's going to be harder for people to save your shots. Shots you shouldn't miss. Shooting consistency can't vouch enough. Okay, finally, moving on to the advanced section of the video. You are now at the rank that if you're not 15 years old and super mechanical and just, you know, if you haven't already hit GC1 in 500 hours, let's say, you are going to be hard stuck GC2, GC3 for a, a pretty long time unless you train the right things, or at least that's what's happened to me. So what I actually did was I recently have gone on a training binge where I've asked everybody I know about improvement. I've gone on streams, I've gone into the DMs, and I've asked people, what do you need to continue to improve after GC1? And I asked a lot of people, but the response that I actually stuck with me the most was the response that Squishy gave. Check this out. Um, I th I'd say I do a bit of everything. I watch a lot of replays. I mean, game sense is still unmatched, I think, when it comes to pro play. You need mechanics, obviously, but if you have good game sense, you can basically do anything. I mean, Monkey Moon's a good example, but having good game sense mixed with good mechanics is what you're looking for. So I try to practice both. It's not necessarily just one thing that I practice, but in general, Rock League is a game where you have to be aiming for self-improvement every time you play or you will fall behind. If the challenge level isn't high enough, you're just gonna be going through the motions. You won't be improving if you're not challenged. At least for the past six months, I haven't been challenging myself with training. I need drills that force me to mess up, force me to get blackout moments like I used to when I was first learning rings. And if you're GC2 or GC3, maybe you can relate. I did some digging. I first learned aerial car control from Kevpert four years ago. And so I checked out his most recent videos. And just in the last two months, he's made two training packs that I think should be an absolutely essential part of anybody's kit who's going from GC1 to SSL, or at least they will be a part of mine. First training pack I want to highlight is something called Dodge Control. This pack is about setting up aerials and controlling the ball in awkward setups. Pros and SSLs are nailing these first touches every time, where somebody like me, I'm hitting them like 20%. The second training pack I've added into my routine is something called wall stops. These wall stops are super common for pros. It's basically when you make one touch into the air and then you use the wall to track down the ball or make a follow-up touch. And from what I've seen in GC2, GC3 lobbies, it's hard to get by if you can't do this stuff. So that's my advanced recommendation, at least what I'm going to be trying to make my final push to SSL. And last thing I want to share with you. Well, actually, you know what? Let me, let me just show you. I watched this video the other day from a pro player named Zanil. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's just getting into the content game. I just love his gameplay because he explains things so well. This is him queuing with Squishy against LJ and Chronic, right? So like everybody in this lobby, insanely mechanical, insanely fast, right? Best of the best. And something that Zanil does that I realize I am just not good at doing is about to come up. Watch this. This is where it starts. We're one minute, 19 seconds into the game, and this is gonna look kind of simple, but LJ is gonna take to the air, and what does Zanil do? Reflexively, instantly off the ceiling to shut this play down. Almost leads to a goal right then and there for Squishy. Then what happens? Chronic gets the ball, what happens? Chronic is to the air, where's Zanil? Shutting down Chronic at the goal line so that he can't get anything. Chronic has to go to the ground. Zanil gets the ball back for Squishy, and they get another uh, attacking opportunity. Right? Guess what happens? Chronic gets the ball. Where's Zanil? Ceiling challenging. 
three ceiling challenges in the first two minutes of the game. Shuts out, shuts down the attack, gets possession back, buys time, and now they're pretty much safe again. Good enough. What happens? They almost get a squishy. Almost gets an open. And what happens a second later? Squishy misses the open. Oh well. Zanil goes to get half boost. Chronic has the ball on the ceiling. And where's Zanil? Like when I was watching this, I was like, wow. But the thing that I realized is like, imagine you're in this lobby in Zanil's place and you're not comfortable on the ceiling. You don't know how to ceiling challenge. You would have been clipped on four times over by Chronic. The meta is getting to a point where if you don't have the answer to the opponent, you're going to get scored on and you won't be able to score. And that's the point. It sounds like, oh, ceiling challenge won't make you rank up. But if you don't know how to ceiling challenge and you're playing in this lobby, you're just getting clipped on again and again by the pros. So I'm going to be mastering the mechanics that I've told you in YouTube videos not to train before. You know how I said ceiling challenges are not important. Squishy saves are not important for plats. I don't think they are. And I will continue to say to plats and diamonds, don't train them. But to get to SSL, I know I need to learn. And so that is the plan going forward. I want to give a huge thanks to all the creators that I was able to study and whose ideas have helped me make this video. Kev Pert, Zanil, Squishy, Cash, everybody else who I, I may even be forgetting. Links are going to be down below. Give some of the ideas I shared a thought, and I'll see you in a couple months with the results. Thanks for listening, guys.